Hey folks, it is time for another video production note. This is number 13. Um, I have to say this is an interesting one because we have brought back from the dead the wheel of source code. So I'll be showing you a little bit of that. All right, there's a lot of new things in this video. It goes on for a while, I ramble a little bit. So uh, yeah, have a good one and I hope you enjoy this. So this is one of the last ones, folks. We might not do another one, we're that close, okay. Here's what's new. Hey, hey, things have changed, folks. Let's have a look. <clears throat> I don't think you've seen, well, maybe you have seen these, but I haven't really explained them. See equipment and inventory here? Uh, this is really so that you can see uh, what is going on. Um, I can just hit I or E and quickly see this for my own, you know, use. But uh, I won't be looking at this, I because I'm going to hit I or E. You can see this, because a lot of the game is what uh, is in the pack, and what do I need, and what am I wielding. So that's a lot of what's, a lot of the mental state in the game is that. And it's a lot harder to have that uh, when you're not ready, you know, when I hit I, when I quickly hit I escape, you know, uh, I see what I need, but the viewer does not. <laughs> So this is for the viewer to quickly get into the headspace of, of what's going on, headspace of the character. Um, yeah, this is called uh, Tiny Inventory and Tiny Equipment. I can show you those if you like. Doo -doo -doo. Okay, um, we eventually we run this dump inventory, which is just the rewriting of uh, the Moria inventory lister. So now it has like the a quantity and then a number. So we have two, we have one question mark, which is a book. That's what's going on there. Um, yeah, and down here somewhere we have something called Invent tiny, and it's our magic, and it's our titles, and then we dump invent, which is the part, the thing up there. We also have this dirt reader thing in main. I'll explain that later. So that is the dump inventory, and dump equipment is like that, but it's more complicated because there is a lot of uh, concern about space. <laughs> so stuffing text, you know, where so that it'll fit in this small box fun program all right so let's uh, just back up one here or back up all the way and look at changes uh, we added a fourth camera so uh, you notice this camera control thing here it has four now um, the first one is always this this webcam um, and then the second one is going to be an actual camera and third and fourth are going to be actual camera as well. So I wrote a steel camera one script that takes uh, just this from the screencast and puts it in its own file. And eventually we pass it to Claptrap and it's, it uh, switches between this, this video as well as the camera videos. Makes sense. Um, this thing here is the camera control. And now we have a columns option. So we wanted to have it horizontal or we wanted to have a box. So we add this columns option to say there are, there are four columns here. If we say two columns, it will be the two by two box, right? So it just adds as many rows as you need. Anyway, it's a cool little program. It doesn't do much, but you've seen it in action before. You will see these numbers change, but I'm not going to set up Claptrap and all the cameras here. So it's always just going to be number one, even if this says four, like it says four there now. Anyway, uh, let's just go through these, plow through them. Uh, saving a copy of index.html. Uh, this has to do with generating charts. So as the charts are generating, uh, it can take a little bit. So what I normally do is I do the blurb. I go stand over there and I say, 
we have a level 14 character at 1500 feet and he needs a, a whatchamacallit, right? So, but I forget. I forget what he needs. I forget the where the character is at. So, uh, and when I run the generate charts thing, the first thing it does is it gets rid of index.html, which is where he was prior to me starting. So that's right. I do the blurb after I play, and that helps me set it up a little bit more if something needs to be set up, right? So I can say, maybe we'll find something special, right? <laughs> Knowing that we have, we're going to find something special. So that helps me do that. Uh, right now, I do an episode every day, which is not going to, you know, it is pretty easy for me to keep it in my head. But when I do it every week, uh, this saving this index.html is going to make it easier for me. So I can just look at that. Let me just close up some stuff here, folks. Stuff we don't need. You know what? This mouse does not work well on my carpet. better <laughs> okay um yeah i don't need to show that it's just the same the, you know how you you know how in the recap it lists all the stats it's just that that's what the index is it's nothing special it's just the index it's the recap for the previous one so that's that next up is the wheel of source code oh, i like saying that uh, everybody likes it, so uh, it's back. That's the plan. So when I want to run Wheel of Source Code, this is what it looks like. Ready? I just run Start Wheel. I'm going to disappear here. We're going to do a Wheel of Source Code. Ready? Enter. Before we get started, let's check out the Wheel of Source Code. Anyway, you know all this stuff. Let's spin the wheel. Show invent. Well, gee, it's pra it's it's just like the one we looked at. Sixty lines long. Oh darn it! I was hoping that this would come up at another time. Uh, do you want to see the max dungeon depth chart? Why well, yes. So we're pausing wheel source code here, folks. That was the stat question. Look at that. So this is a new bit. This is a new bit. It's going to come up during the game. It's not going to come up during Wheel of Source code. <laughs> it's going to pop up. It's going to go like that. It's going to ask the question if you want to see a chart. If you say yes, it pops this up. Isn't that cool? Right. It is totally cool. All right. Back to the Wheel of Source code. It magically types in the script, uh, the, the script, the file that has the show inven function in it, like a SOA, right? So um, there it is, displays inventory items and blah, 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 and we could do this if we really wanted to. And it's the same thing we were just looking at, but different, because it's, it's using curses to put stuff to the screen instead of printf, right? Okay, so that concludes the wheel of source code. And we're back. So you can see that the the darn background has changed to say wheel. And uh, we don't want that anymore. So let's just change it back. Um, I don't have to type in this normally. Normally when I go to edit the, edit the video after one of the scripts I run, uh, it runs this copy command. Oh, come on. 3-1 dot jpeg to pictures background whoosh like a so now all of a sudden i'm italian so the wheel source code stuff happens like so um, freeval has a bunch of databases each database uh, there's it can run six at a time which is how many items are in the wheel um, each wheel item we want to be a function name. So what we do is we pick six random functions and we load them up. 
So that's how we start the wheel. We were on wheel start, and then we do a little dipsy doodle, dipsy doodle with devil's pie, because it's so broken. <laughs> anyway, um, more speed runs, wheel start. Here's what it does. That changes it to red right there, our background. There's a database directory. We pick eight random ones. Look at that, sort, random, sort. Isn't that cool? We pick six random functions that are XML files in this directory here, and we put them into the main database directory, which is .ca, which means Catalan, which is the name of a language from Spain. It's cool. So uh, we, we throw them in there, and then we run Freevile, and that is the program that spins stuff. When we're when uh, you know how the the wheel goes away and we switch to the terminal, that's what this program does. So we add wheel start. This is wheel end, and you can see it sleeps for seven seconds. It kills it. it grabs a PID and it runs kill, but not before it runs a GNOME terminal. And then it sends the keystrokes to actually type in the the name of the file. Cool, eh? When we're done, we say, okay, that, that function, we're not, we don't want to pick it anymore. We don't want to ever pick it again. So we move it into uh, gmoria.used. And it's not there anymore. Okay, so that is that. Uh, the next thing up is generating a thumbnail. YouTube likes to have thumbnails. I like to have thumbnails. But I don't have to do anything <laughs> to make them. So I made this generating, a, you know, automatically generating a thumbnail based on what episode it is. Here's what a thumbnail looks like. Ba bam That's a thumbnail. And then uh, to make a final thumbnail in the same yellow font, we go 005 or 006. And it kind of, I think it kind of looks racy, which is like race, it doesn't look racy. It looks uh, like, uh, I don't know, the checkerboard thing, the motif. And this font, it looks like a car racing type thing. That's what I meant by racy. <laughs> anyway, it looks kind of cool because it's a really large 003 here. It looks cool. Uh, the script that does that is new video. And right at the end, you can see it at work here. We use image magic to do it. This is the the line that actually prints out the 003. Right? You can see that we're using printf there to do zero uh, zero padded three digit number of uh, the episode number. The this size here controls the size of the font. We say if it's white on our picture, it's transparent. That adds the alpha channel. Then we put the transparent GIF onto the thumbnail that you already saw. And that, then it's done. That's how that works. So it's one more thing that I don't have to do. That automatically gets done. <laughs> Notify script. That was the thing that popped up here at the bottom. It went or whatever and asked me the question. That is a script uh, modified from one called Dunstify, D-U-N-S-T-I-F-Y. -I, um, I changed it so that it runs a program. So the little action buttons at the bottom run something. And there's another one. How about that? This program right here is Notify Script. That's what does it. Do you want to see the max hit points chart? So you know what happens when I hit yes. You saw I just kind of turns out a new chart and pops it up. You know what? I just thought of something good. I can, before I show this, I can generate the chart. Isn't that a cool idea? So when I hit yes, it's instant. Oh, that's smart. Okay. Yeah, I got to change that. What I want to show you this time, though, is this no. Pick another chart, please. Okay. This happened last time. There we go. I gotta like select that somehow. Maybe um, Devil's Pie can do that. Focus. 
Anyway, um, these are all the charts I can do. How about that? <clears throat> this is called Stat Picker. Whoa, Stat Picker up there. It's like Nose Picker, but for stats, right? <laughs> so uh, you can have these stats over here, which are attribute stats, right? Or you can have all these other stats, which are the non-attribute stats. Over here at the bottom, we can say, forget uh, the whole run, just do today. That's what that part says. So which one did we look at last time? It was like max something. Was it max HP? I don't know. Let's do score this time. I'm going to click score. And it doesn't take it. What's going on here? I'm going to just... Okay, I'm back. Whew. Maybe I'll edit all that. I had problems with my mouse there. Uh, hopefully I'll just edit all that out. You don't have to watch it. <laughs> Wow, that is going to be a problem. So that was Notify Script. Oh, you know what? I didn't show you. I didn't actually show you the stat picker work. It should work now. Should work. I hate when people say should in computer problems. Anyway, here it is. Like I said, I can pick any stat. So let's pick uh, score. And it goes off and it generates this uh, chart takes a minute because it's churning through all the files and there it is just like that so um we used to have a score that was higher what happened there that would be interesting to know did we pick up something special and then drop it hmm? who knows did we maybe just have extra gold and then we got rid of gold who knows because the score is a mysterious number that moria comes up with so that's that that's the stat picker it's pretty cool you can say only include stuff from today, um, but we won't do that this time. The other one is uh, uh, the stat, the attribute stats. And they're a little bit different. They're treated differently in the code because of this, right? Because you have 18 slash 20 instead of 19. So you can see our uh, strength is uh, pretty crappy. But anyway, that's that. Um, the cool thing about that, uh, I think we'll leave, yeah, we'll leave that to later. The next thing is the regenerates video script. Uh, I make mistakes. The, uh, uh, regenerate video is very short. What we do is we take our user input and we pass it back into new video and that regenerates the video. So the idea is that we can pass in the exact same input and get uh, uh, make a change in our scripts and get a different output. Regenerate video just makes it easy for me to quickly rerun without having to type in all those crazy numbers again, like 00, zero colon zero 01 colon 15.12. Who needs all that, right? So it makes it go a little, a little bit quicker. Okay, this is what I was going to explain. Um, GMoria chart, that is the thing that generates those charts that we just saw. The score chart, right? Um, but it's generic. It's genericized. So I can just make it, uh, I can just give it parameters that make it create a chart of any stat. That's the idea. So if I were to look at that, Where is it? Oh, it's just been confused. Where is GMoria chart if not here? It is there. All right. See at the top here, we give it a stat binary, a font file, and then we need a font name and the title, which goes across the top. The title can be many words, right? It's just not a single word. Uh, so it's many parameters, many arguments. Hmm. Yeah. 
So in this case, we picked a stat binary of uh, GMARIA score, right? That is the program that it runs. It does all this GNU plot stuff and it generates a chart. Uh, GMARIA score is pretty simple. Here's the program. You can see this S score function gets passed in as a function pointer pointer to something called dir reader. Right there, right? So um, dir reader is the thing, the new thing that makes it all go a lot faster. Instead of running score on as an executable on every file, gmoria dash score on every file, we run it once and it gen it goes through all of the files. And that makes it go a lot faster. You know those charts you see in the um, recap? Well, those used to take uh, a lot longer to make, like 24, 30 minutes. And now it's about 18 minutes, which is nice. So Dur Reader is the thing that does that. I'll just show you that. Dur Reader. Here it is. Um, it optionally works with today, so it looks for this today thing. If it sees that, then it sets a flag, right? Otherwise, uh, and also, it um, opens up directories on the on the command line. So if we pass more than one directory, we open more than one directory here, and we cycle through each entry of the directory to see if it's a dot save file. If it is, and if we're doing today, well, we check to see if uh, you know we check to see if uh, the stat the save file was created today or not, in the last day. Finally, we open up the save file itself and we load it. Um, we print out the turn, which is the y-axis, right? The horizontal axis of our charts. And, uh, and then we do, finally, we do the function that we passed in, which happens to be s-score that we just saw. Okay. So the idea here is that um, we need the time for the chart. That's what that is all about. Anyways, that's that. It's pretty simple. It's pretty fun. It's exciting too, I think. So um, there is a GMORIA stat chart as well as chart because of that uh, vertical axis with um, you know 18 slash 20. That uh, requires different GNU plot stuff. So that's why there's another script for that. Stat picker, you've already seen that. It's pretty cool, right? Um, render video now has a minus i on. Yeah, it's called render video. Um, minus i is the clap time. Sometimes I log in and I can't quite do the clap. It syncs the cameras together like a cl like a clapboard. Um, I can't do it in the first sixty seconds sometimes. Now, render video, the last step I do, has a minus i option. So I can just say minus i 80 or 90 or whatever. I showed you that in the last video. Works great. I'm really happy with that. I really like the way it plays the clap sounds. I really like that. That's so cool. Because I don't want to wait five hours to know there's a problem. <laughs> Ugh, that would be horrible. So uh, there's one more thing I want to show you. That's the end of our changes file here. And that is this. This is the ask for charts. This is the thing that brings up those uh, notify script things at the bottom. It goes, right? So um, it's just going to wait a random number of seconds. That's what that sleep does. Then we're going to pop up a random chart. Then we're going to wait again. And we're going to pop up another chart. So during each episode, the idea is that twice that's going to come up and I can either pick a chart or I can choose to show the chart that pops up. Pretty cool, right? So let's look up, let's look at pop up random chart. Here are all the charts we can do. This is, uh, it runs GMORIA stir. The one means it is an attribute chart, not a regular chart. And there's a title. Right, so there's all the charts we can do. Isn't that cool? I think it is. Um, 
what we do is we grab a random one somehow. Right there. We could have uh, we could have done a sort a random sort and picked head, but we use shuff instead to do to pick a number. So we go grab out a particular line, parse it apart, and we either run display chart or display attribute chart. You can see how the syntax for notify script works here. Again, it comes from a program called Dunstify, D U N. STIFY, and I change it to run a script on these buttons instead of, um, what did it do? I don't recall. Anyway, um, so we say, do you want to see a blankety blank chart? And on this button, we say yes, and we run this script, which is one of these. And the no button, comma no, just runs stat picker. Pretty cool, eh? Ah, uh, let's look at display chart. What the heck? Can't be that difficult, can it? If the minus T option is given, then uh, it, it means that we want today. We want this chart to only apply for today. And that's what this does. Finally, we run GMORIA chart with the minus T or not. Uh, we pass in the program, which is GMORIA-score in the example we looked at. Pass in the fonts and give it a title. Finally, we run EOG to bring the chart up. Pretty cool, right? I think so. So that is that. A lot of changes, eh? Wow. So um, I'll leave it there. I think we're just about done. We're just about done making the system that is going to the engine that's going to make more speed runs go. I think I'm pretty happy. Uh, I'd like to change the, uh, I've said this before, I'd like to change, well, the stat picker is little, still a little broken. The mouse problem is a problem. Um, but I also like to change the transitions. I like the wheel of source code transition. Did I show you that? I don't think I did. Ugh, what am I doing? Here's the wheel of source code transition. Pretty cool, eh? I like that transition. I don't like the intro transition that I spent a lot of time on, and I don't like the generic transition, so they're gonna change. Here's what the uh, intro transition looks like. Oh, it's not that. Yeah, I don't like that weird diagonal thing I did at the end. It took a long time to do, but I just don't like it. And the other one is generic transition. I don't, I don't like the at the end. Don't like it. So I have to change that somehow. All right, uh, so that's what I want to change, but it's really just about there. Um, I might not even do another one of these. It's that close. I think we're, we're really right where we want to be for uh, making more speedruns go. This is what? The, this is the 13th? This is the 13th one of these? So there might not even be a 14th, folks. Oh, it's been a long haul, but uh, I think this is shaping up very, very nicely. What do you think? Uh, let me know. Leave a comment or something. All right. So uh, that's that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.